Okay. All right, we're recording now. Um, so basically, uh, we're just going to go over our lab document right now. Um, basically, we're going to add music to our series, our scene. We're going to add sound effects. Uh, we'll set up the death decal, and we'll set up the, re the reset function. And again, look, these are these are pretty straightforward. You you've done something similar already with the Tucker Ball, and then we'll talk about game pads. Um, extra credit right now. There is a way to support. There's a way to do this. We'll require some engineering using techniques that are not in the scope of this class. So that so don't worry about multiple game pads right now. Uh, but using a single game pad, that's definitely within reach. And, and um, again, it talks like, hey, if you did this and did that, uh, we've already done most of the work for game pads. So it basically it's going to be implementing basically what is going to be in that game pad. The P0 is how we're going to go about doing it. So let's talk about, so uh, let's bring up the assignment. Um, there, are some audio, there are audio files here for you to go grab and use. Um, I created these. And the descent is is uh, a free um, audio file. It's a it's uh, royalty free music. Um, if you're looking for music, there is called filmmusic.io. There we go. Um, and Here we go. Here's the latest movie. So here is Silent Movie 110, Epic Christmas Trailer 9. So if you were looking for something for Christmassy or a silent film, here's Reaction So Fi. And there you can search for all sorts of things. Uh, we can go to search. Uh, we can look for genres. Let's say we want... Um, let's do metal music for the hell of it. Yeah. Here we go. Rush Rebellion. And we can click here. There we go. In fact, I'm going to download this. Yeah, and as a guest, start download. And there we go. So I'm just dragging this off. And again, um, close. Actually, let's go to it itself. Should be a page for it, uh, but essentially you would you would credit this like the the author. Uh, where is, is it? Oh yeah, uh, that's probably what we should do. Tags. Um, here's the license. So basically, was this created with AI? Ooh. That temporary. I don't know. This this may not be use maybe use we may not be able to use this because it was created with AI. Um, Hold on. Yes, this is required. Um, how should I tribute the creator? So basically, here's an example. Uh, Battlefield. So basically, Sasha again. Sasha End is actually the creator of this. Again, this is again Sasha End. So that it happens to be. So it would be Rust Rebellion by Sasha End. Uh, the link to the uh, to the this this is the link that would you would want to put, and then um, basically the standard license or whatever license we're using. So. Um, I think we're okay since Sasha, Sasha, Sasha is the owner of the website, so that's okay. Um, let's go back just, just quickly one more time. Um, let's see, search. Um, genre, movies, vocals, I'm trying to buy, but I wanted to search by author. Keyword, uh, so um, 
getting. I'm getting. I'm getting not. What, what is going on with this website? All right, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna continue. Uh, let's go. Let's get back to Unity. So let's start with music. So um, under my assets, I am going to make a new folder. I'm just gonna call it audio. And this is gonna hold my my files. So I'm gonna bring in. I'm bringing in four files. I'm just there again. I've got them off on the side of my screen right now, so I'm dragging them right into here. So here is the Rust Rebellion. This is the the music music file. Here is the Descent, just so we know what it sounds like. So, and then we've got a, a Pew sound, and then there is a Bap song. No, that is a Pew sound. That I know because I made it. So, uh, yeah, these GMW uh, that represents that I made those sound effects. Um, and there are the licenses. We go back to uh, your lab assignment. There, there's copyright information down here. So the GMW sounds I made, you can use them. I don't care what you do with them. For the most part. Um, all right, so music. Let's start with, we're going to just drag it right into the scene. And so it's going to create an, a, uh, a game object, and it's going to create an audio source. And basically the audio source is that, and it's going to play on awake. Uh, I'm going to click on loop just for the sake of it. Um, and then there's different uh, priority. You know, there is the volume, uh, which I'll put down to 0.5 just to start with. So we got a place to go up and down. We'll play with pitch in a moment. Um, and then the big one is in the no, that's the 3D sound settings. There, you go, spatial blend. Um, basically, zero means that it is a 2D sound. So it's basically think of like um, the level music is going to be 2D sound. Whereas th 3D means it's going to play from the origin of where this object is. And it'll be subject to distance or how far from. So, so this is where on the arena prefab, the main camera, there is the audio listener. So basically, it will it will play relative to where that object is, and there'll, there'll be you know left channel, right channel stuff based on where it is in the world. So, uh, for our purposes, I'm just going to press play right now. You can hear right away. There we go. We've got music playing in our in our scene. Um, do we need to do anything more? I mean, there, there could be more that we do if you wanted. Um, you wanted to script the audio. There's more that you can do. But for our purposes right now, we're just throw, we're just doing you know throw it in throw the throw the music in the scene. Be the level music. In future applications, would you like write a, a system to manage? Of course you would. But no big deal at the moment. All right. Um, let's go open up our player. Let me close this. Close out. Uh, scripts. Let's see. So. All right. So. There are two classes that we are most concerned about when we're dealing with sounds. And we're going to do it in a very simple way where we're going to play, play a sound. Uh, basically, it's a one-off, a one -off basically, scenario. Um, to start, we need um, three variables. Uh, public, audio clip. Uh, we're going to do BAP, public, audio clip pew which are going to represent the the two audio clips we also need a audio a type an audio source um, for our purposes we're going to go down to start and we're going to basically do it's going to be game object dot at we're going to do is add component of type the audio source, not audio clip, audio source. Why are we doing, I mean, I could add an audio source or I could 
but I'm going to add it so I don't have to worry about having to add it. Now, we don't need to set any particular properties on it right now, but we'll, we'll come back and they'll, they'll, we'll, play, we'll play with it in a moment. Um, and so now that we've got, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back to Unity, go, go back to my player. Um, and so I've got these two pieces right now. Let's go to our assets, audio. Click on my player one again. And let's... that's Pew. There we go. There we go. So now I've got the, now I've got, now I've listed those, I've got references to the, the assets in the uh, project window here in uh, assigned to my, my player. So now we've got that. Um, it is pretty straightforward. And basically it's going to be on fire one. So we could do this as, I'm gonna do this as part of fire one, fire two. I mean, this could be part, spawn the projectile, it could be part of the, you know, we could, we could do, do this here. Um, for our purposes, I'm just going to do this here for right now. Uh, source, and the function is um, play one shot. And it's going to ask what clip. And I'm going to use um, use the BAP sound here. And then down in Fire 2, I'm going to go in and do the pew sound. Again, these are the variables that we've created. And that's pretty much straightforward. This is this is the, the line of code that's going to do this. We need an instance of an audio source, which we created. And then we need to know what, what audio clip we're going to play. You know, all audio, whether it's an MP3, a WAV file, o, o, OG, that, which is an odd, odd format file, whether you know, all those come in and they're considered audio, you know, they're audio clips essentially. Um, so I'm going to save. I'm going to go down. Um, one of the things I'm going to do right away with the source. So we're going to start. Here we go. Let me move this line above. Um, so the, so the spatial blend, I'm actually going to set that to one. So that we will play in 3d space. It, yeah, it can, it can in theory echo. It is basically, again, it won't not necessarily echo for our purposes because basically we're playing, we're playing it in the audio is like really, really on top of it. Yeah, the same object is where is you know the camera is not too far away from uh, where where it's being played. So I'm gonna save this. We now we can go back and we will go back to Unity and we'll press we'll play and then we got so for our purposes what we we are going to do is we're going to Go back to my audio settings. Uh, crank my audio all the way up, and I'm actually going to go down here. I'm going to crank this, put, bring this down to 0.2. And there we go, 0.1. Do something low, so that you can hear the. So the one thing that's going on right now is that um, there's no variance. It's the same sound effect regardless of how many, you know, I keep hitting it. And there's no variance whatsoever with that at all. All right. So we notice how, I, again, we played with, we can play with the volume, but there's also a pitch heat volume here as well. Um, so what we can do
let's let's basically create a uh, public play with Okay, so we're going to create, uh, and this is a void function. So we're, we're going to create a, 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 a function called play with variance. Um, and we're going to go down and grab. So ultimately what's going to, so let's just get it up and running. Uh, let me grab this function. Let's move it down to the fire. So we can see it. Just moving it where it is in the file, just so that it's easier to understand. Um, so, so the idea here is that we will then use that function instead. Okay. So so far nothing's changed except that we've had, we've added this function. Um, what we want to do now is um, let's play with the volume. And let's say the let's say the volume. So it'll be float volume. Um, I'm going to set that to point point eight for right now. Um, and again, we'll say source dot. Again, here's the volume. Uh, it will be equal to. Okay, so this will be uh, um, we'll call it clip volume. And then we're going to do float clip uh, pitch. And I'm going to set that to point um, nine to start off with. Uh, and then we'll go again. We'll do a source dot pitch. Let's see what to do. clip pitch. Okay. So volume is gonna go is gonna range between point eight to to one, and then pitch range uh, 0.9 to 1.1. And we'll just put these as S. So basically what we need is, is the uh, the mathf dot um, sorry, it's not mathf, it's uh, random um, where is it? Actually, we can do the range here of 0.8f to uh, 1.0f. So we can get actually get rid of this. And then down here, again, it'll be 0 0.9 to 1.1f. So basically, every time we play the clip, we're going to change the volume just by a little bit and the, and the pitch by a little bit. And it doesn't take a lot, doesn't take much to, to, to um, I mean, we, we'll actually make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. This will be a much, much larger range, and it will be affected a lot more by the pitch. But we'll play that. Uh, we'll go back, and we will press play. You can hear that. Yeah, it is. So, so again, I'm actually going to turn off the audio, the music for a bit. Um, so again, 0.8 to 0.1, that's a really large range. Um, it doesn't take it doesn't take much. So I'm going to bring it down half the size what I wanted before, um, and then I'll. And that's more more in range of what. Of what the clip is clip is doing. I mean, I could go a little bit. You know, you can go up one side, down side. You know, you can you can play with it a little bit as you see fit. But basically, just by playing with the pitch, playing with the volume, uh, just by a little bit, 
will give you enough variance. Um, again, we can bring this down, probably down a little bit more. Maybe eight, eight point five to one point five, one point one point one five. So, so, so far good. I mean, we got music, we've got sound effects going in. So next is death. All right, so the first thing that we need to do, um, and then finally, again, these values right here, um, I mean, ideally, I've hard-coded those in, uh, but like, again, I'm gonna write this right here for one moment. So uh, public float uh, pitch max, uh, 1.0 F public float pitch uh, min is going to be equal to 0.7 F and then public uh, um, sorry these are these are the volume well let me grab these This is going to be 0.85, 1.15. And so really these should be these variables as opposed to hard coding them in. Again, what's, what, again what, what's the benefit of doing this is that I can then now move these all the, put these at the back where they were supposed to be. Uh, we can put these right here. So now I can edit, I can go and I can edit them in the editor. <laughs> again, this is getting bigger and bigger. And again, right now, don't worry about that, that of, is an issue. All right, so let's, so now that we've got that, um, we are gonna need basically a, um, a vector three starting location. We'll just make this a vector three zero, so it's initialized, and then a uh, quaternion starting uh, row, Rotation, quaternion dot identity, and then in start, basically it is again start, starting location is equal to game object, transform dot position, starting rotation is equal to game object dot transform. So we've got those two variables set up. Um, I'm just going to grab these because, again, we do have our reset player. Again, this is basically, I'm going to flip this around. Again, nothing that we haven't done before. It's just doing it, doing it here. Oop, there we go. If we wanted to build score, um, that we would need to go to our projectile. In fact, we we're going to do a public 
um, combat player, we'll call it owner. Um, I'm going to keep it public because not that, that we're initializing it. Um, it's more that we are we're assigning that. Um, basically, we're basically, and I, ideally this would probably be a property, um, but we're going to leave just a public variable right now. So let's go back. To, well, now that we've had that, we can now go back to our spawn projectile, and then we're actually going to do um, do a game object. Yeah, we'll do we'll do game object. Uh, we'll call it projectile. And then projectile uh, get component of the uh, combat projectile script. So com there we go combat projectile CP. And then CP owner owner why is it yelling about that oh it's because I didn't end the line over here let's make this bigger there we go So basically, when, once we created the, the again, instantiate returns a game object. So we're going to gra grab the projectile, grab its script. Now I'm I'm not using the if statement to do it because I know that the the this copy projectile has that the project the the what we're building has in it. Um, I mean I I should do it anyways. If CP, let's do this right. So if, if it doesn't if it doesn't spawn with a, with that script, it's not going to crash things. So so now that we're adding the now we're adding so now this this function is really a, a effectively a function is a factory. It builds it builds the object, sets it up, creates the object, sets it up, sets it in a, any parameters it needs. So now that we know that we that w that the projectile know who who it owns. Let's go back to the projectile itself on trigger. So the first thing that we want to do now is on trigger on trigger enter. Uh, what we what we're going to do now is basically you're going to say, hey, um, we want to get um, a combat player CP. Is gonna, and we're going to go to other dot game object get component and we want to use in parent again why why in parent again we could be hitting uh, a collision piece like uh, the tank tread and we really want it in the in the, uh, the script that's in its root so we'll look at combat player Again, if CP, and then we can go in. Basically, we can do CP dot. So let's look at combat player quickly. Where's reset player? And when we go find reset player, input get input. Um, it's not wasn't tagged as public, so we couldn't access that side of the class. So by tagging that now public, we can go back to combat and actually now use there's now reset player. Um, let's go and let's put let's add two variables: public int deaths. public int kills let's 
So now we can go into the combat projectile and be like, okay, um, we can go to our owner, kills, and add and in increment the kills. We can then um, CP which is the other, so the CP in this case is the other player, is who we hit, uh, deaths, can increment their, their death count. Um, we can, in theory, reset the owner. If we wanted to do that, like, hey, reset the game, uh, we could do that as well. But now, now here, the projectile is now... Projecting basically, okay. I've hit the other. I we can we I incremented my the owner's kills, and I've incremented the person who did their deaths. So we can save that. Now in the combat player, we are doing all the work of the project. So here's the soft projectile. Here's the raycast hit. So in, here we go. We have a hit. We're setting our laser controller. We instantiate the marker prefab. And then the next thing that we would want to do is basically get uh, the combat player. And again, we'll use the CP. And it'll be our hit.collider.gameObject. And then we're going to use get component and parent so that we're making sure we're getting going up the hierarchy. Combat player. And then if. We have CP. And it's going to be very much CP. So in the other player, we're going to reset them. Uh, CP uh, deaths, we're going to increment. And in this case, we, we're, we are controlling our own script. So our kills. So now I'm going to do basically a, a reporting right now. Um, so it's going to be a string um, kill message. Well, and then it'll debug dot log kill message. Okay. So what we're going to do is going to be uh, basically um, game object dot name plus hit uh, CP game object dot name and I forgot the plus sign and then we can do um, We'll, do, we'll just do that for right now. Um, and later on, we'll, we'll display death and kills on screen. So next next week, now that we've got these in, in play, um, and you, you don't need to do, this is extra credit, but this will definitely be helpful next week. Um, just showing you that we can now start tracking. And now now that we've, you know, with the, particularly with the projectile, now knowing who its owner is, we can tell, we can report who did what. If you wanted a health system, you could then add a damage to the amount of the projectile and the damage in the, the laser, and then you could, you could track health. Um, so, all right, I'm going to save this, and then we can go in. Um, I need to, so first thing I need to do now, what in player one, why is the laser control? Okay, um, not sure what's going on here at the moment. Laser control. Oh, okay. This is just. There we go. Um, one thing about the laser model. Um, the this needs to be 0.5, and this needs to be 0.5. So the the length of this 
of the cylinder at 111 is actually a length of 2 for some reason. So I just need to bring that 0.5 on the Y and then 0.5 forward so it gets the, the control properly. So, All right, so now that I've got this pretty much all set up, um, I'm going to duplicate the object. And this will be player two. Be player two. I'm going to uh, get rid of you for right now. I'll grab player two. I'm going to put it down 10. So I'll put player one negative 10. Um, just so that we know the difference between the two players, let's go to our assets. Um, we'll use, we'll use purple. Is it going green? There we go. So I'll just color them so that we've got different colors. Uh, player two, want to make sure that my input number is number two. And we can look at the deaths and kills right here. And I'll go in. And get a little closer. So you can see that I'm getting deaths here. I will go in and I will. You can see that it reset the, the other player tank. You can see as I hit it, I'm getting, I'm getting closer. So I'm getting different points of hits. Again, uh, it's not moving because it's in its starting location. But, you know, I'm going to get that. So you can see right now I've got like 30, 35 deaths, 33 kills. So on player one, you should see the flip, 33 deaths, 35 kills. So, so, so far good. Uh, last piece of this is basically setting up the gamepad. Now, for those of you at home, you're not going to see, I will demonstrate the gamepad um, to the people in the room. Um, but you, those of you who are just watching, you're going to have to follow along. Um, Let's go look at our, again, we've set up player one, player two. We set up player zero. And this is going to be our gamepad. Um, again, we've been doing clear inputs. So we'll do that right here. Um, and then this will be, gamepad is going to be our class. Uh, gpad is what I'm going to use for a variable. And it'll be gamepad.current. And then if gpad is not equal to null, And again, we're going to grab, I'm going to grab the, uh, yeah, I'm just going to grab this right here. Because this, this will this will plug in really nicely. Because the first thing we had to do is take the keys and map them. We don't have to. Literally, we can go to our gamepad dot left stick uh, get value. Oh, sorry, read value. And it's going to be the same thing, except this is going to be the right stick. Again, this is like plugged in right away. Um, again, for these, it's going to be gamepad.north. Come on. But north, let's press this frame. I'm going to go in. I'm just going to. Come on. There we go. 
And now I can just go in and basically button south, button east, button west. And for our purposes for this week, we are have established now our gamepad. So I'm going to save save this. I'm going to go back into my map. I will set player one. Uh, I'll set player two to. We'll stop it. Uh, player two. I'll set the to input its number zero. And turn around. So I'm plugging in a 360 controller. This will work with a PlayStation controller as well. And what's nice is that if you look down here in the console, you know, Xbox One controller for Windows. And if I press play, you can see me rotating, I'm moving with the controller. So I need to actually increase my, my distance. So way, way back here. So one thing we just found out is that if I'm way, way back here, I am not actually sh I'm sh I'm firing. I'm not hitting anything. So like you can see the laser is showing. Um, I wasn't hitting anything at that at this distance. So my again my 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 raycast distance. I'm going to go back. That probably needs to be not 25, but maybe like we'll say 40. And we'll go do this for player two as well. So that I'm, I'm shooting across the entire arena, at least with the Raycast. Again. So now you can see I'm firing across. And part of the reason, so does anyone know why I'm why I'm getting away with this? Why that's working? I am shooting the projectiles, but why am I, why is why is the projectiles just getting destroyed? Go, let's look at our player one. Let's look at our laser control. Let's take a look at our laser model. Uh, I do have the mess render. Why is that picking it up? That's a good question. I'm not sure why it's picking it up. Or, uh, no, I know why. Um, it's because the projectile has... The projectile has... Let's go back to the so part so part of what's going on is that the projectile has has a rigid body and has a collider and so here's the rigid body is it the hit marker that's destroying it that's another good question Let's take a look at the hit marker. No, it's going through it. It's one of those interesting. I'm not sure why the projectile. There's an interaction that projectile is getting is getting hit by the laser, but I'm not sure what exactly is is kicking off. We look at the projectile. The only thing that's that's has its lifespan, but if it enters the trigger. Uh, let's do, let's do, so we can look, look into the log. Let's clear this. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, okay. Okay, so it's going on. I'm I'm hitting the projectile, but I'm not telling it to destroy it. Um, I keep finding I keep finding the same projectile. That's a good question. Let's let's go in and actually like again. Let's let's go. Okay. Well, if uh, combat, let's say. Um, Combat projectile, uh, CPR. Projectile. And there we go. So let's say, hey, we if it's not the combat player, what, what if it's the projectile? Um, and again, definitely down here. Let's do a return. So if we hit if we hit a projectile, um, let's just do projectile dot uh, game object dot um, uh, destroy. Sorry, b destroy the projectile dot game object. So now when I so if I hit a projectile, destroy it. So now that we've got this in place, uh, test two, I gotta go clear these out. Let's actually go take care of that. I'll, t I'll take care of that after class. All right, so I'll play. So we've got interesting gameplay going on. Let's uh, grab the tank over here. So. So you can see that I'm shooting shooting the projectiles with the with the laser at this point. So we've got interesting gameplay going on here. Don't get me wrong, it's hard, it's gonna be tough, but it is possible to shoot the laser, uh, shoot the projectile with your laser. What was that? I mean, it is kinda at the moment, it is doing a, it's leaving an explosion, but we're not doing a, a special effect explosion. Um, the only thing that we haven't done for our player right now is essentially the, let's go to the top back up here, and what we want is a, we're going to do a public game object death decal. All right, so on our reset player, if I can find it again. Um, what we're going to do is we're doing a instantiate the death decal. This is going to be our game object dot transform dot position. Game object transform dot rotation. So basically wherever we are at, we're going to drop this down. And we want to do this before we move. So we want to drop the death kill before we move move back. So if we save that. We will go back. We can go back to our game, and then for player one. Um, so for our let's go to our project uh, icons, and then again this was our decal that we want. So we're going to go back to player one. Actually, we could player one, player two, and we can assign both of them at the same time. So here's the death decal. We'll just assign that right in there. So I'll move 
the tank. Let me get the player two back to player number two so I can get, get just use the keyboard quickly. And let's crank this up. You can see that I killed the tank, left the decal, and off it went. And then I'll move the tank up here. You see it left based on its rotation. So the only thing that I'm not doing right now is that um, these don't have a life, lifetime on them right now. And that's basically, let's go back to the object itself. Let's, we need to stop this. And we'll add the lifetime. Lifetime script. And we'll say 10, say 15 seconds. We'll leave this for a while. Um, we do want to remove the box collider. Otherwise, it, we can stack stack the, these up and move the tank up in a weird way. So, let's uh, go back to player two. Uh, input number two, move speed of ten. Let's go to player one. Give them a move speed of ten, just to make our lives easier, so we can move around the level easier. Give these. You see, these are now starting to disappear. And you know, why are we doing this with these lifespans so that you know they don't clutter up the entire arena the whole time? They're there just for decorative purposes. So again, you can see. You can see that you know they are getting different rotations based on what the tank is. Okay, you can see these these pre prefabs going away. This is pretty much where we are at right now. Um, next week we are going to look at doing um, the UI pieces and doing essentially setting setting up a game a game manager. So this is going to be like, the, for those who are in, in Unreal, that would be like the game mode class for our tense purposes. You know, command and control of that purposes. And we'll also probably be doing um, moving between moving between um, levels as well is what we'll be handling as well. So there'll be a, a button script that's going to be like, load this level, load that level, load this level. Um, we will create a main menu and then uh, lab 10 um, and that this, this will whether I give you lab 10 next week depends on how long I go with lab 9 but lab 10 just so you know is that you're going to make a um, two builds of this of this application so your application is going to include this combat game your plinko game and your soccer game plus a main menu that you will create a windows build of and then you'll make an HTML5 build, which you'll then be able to upload to um, Ichio to be played on their website. So uh, again, we'll just just to bring you up so you're you're on course with what's going on. Um, so here's itch.o. I'm already logged in. Yeah, don't worry about it. Let's go to my profile. Here is a Unity test. And you can kind of run the project, and hooray! It is. It's the spinning cube, hooray! That's and that's you know for our purposes you know I'll be honest with you for our purposes this was a test of getting something up on itch.io.
All right. Your so so the labs that you've been working on, we're going to create into a small application, and that will in turn basically get you be built into a HTML5 uh, project, and then uploaded to Itch.io, and that that's Lab 10. So just giving you a heads up, um, create an Itch.io account. You're going to need it. It's free. Use your again. You should have a Google account for professional use. Use that Google account to log into Itch.io. Um, any questions about what we need to do for Lab for Lab 8? Straightforward. Pretty sh All right, I'm going to stop the recording here.